Okay, in the last video, we looked at classical conditioning and operant conditioning. We were paying attention to operant conditioning and we got as far as reinforcement. Okay, so what about the schedules of reinforcement? When is, is uh, you know something reinforced for its behavior? Well, there are different patterns that can be on. There's continuous reinforcement, which means every time the animal or the person does the behavior, it is reinforced for it, okay? Um, you learn the behavior quickly. So if you're training a dog, um, if you reinforce it every time it sits, it will learn that behavior more quickly. Uh, however, we find with partial schedules, which means we don't give them the reinforcement all the time, it actually seems to stave off extinction and it seems almost more reinforcing in some ways. Okay, so if you can think of this, like if you're at a wall and you push a button and $5 comes out, and you push a button and five dollars comes out and you push a button on the wall and five dollars comes out and all of a sudden five dollars doesn't come out after you push it are you going to stop pushing it probably not you're going to push it harder quicker you're going to bang on it and then five dollars comes out and you're going to continue to do it and it's going to be hard to leave that wall pushing that button because that next push just might get you that five dollars so partial reinforcement schedules work really well but we have different types we have fixed ratio we have variable ratio fixed interval and variable interval okay and we'll break those down so that you can understand those a little bit so first of all when we anytime we talk about ratio think of it as number okay so it's for every number of times you do something um, that you're going to be reinforced however it may be fixed or it may be variable if it's fixed it means for example every three times we're going to reinforce you okay so maybe you're a a car salesman and, and for every five cars you sell you're gonna get a bonus so you know it's every five times so you work hard to get to that fifth one and of course when you're on you know I've already sold four you're gonna work really hard to get that fifth one so respondent behavior seems to increase the closer you get to that fixed number now a variable ratio means it's an unpredictable number of times so it's like over an average um, so say a um, a baseball player that's a batter he's a 300 hitter which means he gets a hit three out of every 10 times at bat um, he may go 10 at bats with no hits and then he may go six at bat six hits for his next 10 and it averages out to being uh, 30% okay three and ten times uh, and that is variable because you don't know what's going to happen um, other things that are variable set on variable ratios, uh, slot machines and casinos, people line up and they play them forever and you pull it and you know it's going to be, it pays off every so often uh, after every you know certain number of pulls it pays a percentage and so people are afraid to walk away from that machine in case that next pull is the one. Same thing with fishing, you know anybody who's into fishing, they will definitely they're really into it usually, right? It's hard to leave the lake because if they they just work a little bit longer, if cast one more time, you know, like they might get that fish on that next one. Okay, so ratio means number, fixed means there's a definite, variable means it's unpredictable. Now interval, think of interval as being a time. Okay, so interval means time. So if it's a fixed interval, it means that the reinforcement happens after a time. So for example, it's a Tuesday discount at a store. So everybody rushes out there. They are reinforced to go shop on that Tuesday. Um, because it's every Tuesday, it's fixed, okay? Now, a variable interval means it's unpredictable, again. Okay, so it's after a random amount of time. Okay, uh, as checking one of your Facebook responses. Okay, so you write something on Facebook and you're curious about the social feedback you get. So you check, okay, and over time you're going to get these responses. You don't know when, so it's unpredictable. So that is variable. So interval means time. So if you think of ratio also is it's your actions that make the difference. It's how many times you do something. Whereas interval, it's going to happen at a certain time that is either predictable or not predictable. So it's not really up to how many times you've done something. Okay, so those are the schedules and they have differing, uh, differing effects. As the fixed ratio I mentioned, once you get closer to that time where this was the car salesman uh, example I gave you, reinforcement increases. Now a variable ratio um, 
is a little bit more steady of a state, okay? But you can see they're very uh, reinforcing. As you can see, the number of responses are huge. Now, intervals, um, the responses aren't as often, but you can see if it's a fixed interval. So say this is uh, every month we have a quiz. So you're going to go along and then you get closer to that month. So your response increases there. So it has this type of effect. Then you level out until you get close to the time again. Okay. And this is the sort of path that it will lead. Now, a steady responding is on variable intervals. With variable intervals, this would be like a pop quiz. You're going to get a pop quiz every week. So you don't know when it is, so you sort of stay ready all the time, so it's more of a steady rate. So the different reinforcement schedules can have an effect on the person or the animal's behavior. And this would have to be planned out if you were doing this on purpose. However, a lot of these things happen to us just without thinking. Um, you know, you think, how do you get paid at work? And you go to work because you get paid. That's your reinforcement for doing it. What kind of schedule are you on and how does it affect you the way you work? Just think about that. So the opposite of reinforcement is punishment. Okay, so anytime it, some a behavior is reinforced, it increases or strengthens. When it's punishment, it means the behavior decreases or weakens. Okay, so again, we have positive punishment and we have negative punishment. So, for example, with positive punishment, this would be administering an adverse stimulus. Okay, so your dog's barking home stops, so you spray him with water. You added the water to the situation, so it's positive, and it stops the dog from barking or weakens that response, so it is punishment. Same thing like if you speed. We want you to stop speeding, so we punish you by adding a ticket to you. Now, negative punishment means taking away. A positive punishment might surprise you. Like, um, again, get away from the idea that positive means good and negative means bad. But, you know, giving a child a spanking to stop a behavior is punishment. And it is positive punishment because you added the spanking. Negative punishment is to withdraw uh, something that is rewarding to the person. Um, so maybe your parent wants you to stop doing something and the punishment is taking away your car. Ouch. Okay, so that would be negative punishment. Um, or uh, perhaps we take away your license because the tickets, the positive punishment wasn't working. So then they go to the negative punishment of taking away your license. Okay, so something is taken away and it weakens the behavior. So when we look at punishment, you know, what is better? You know, and it's generally considered it's probably better to reinforce good behavior than it is to punish bad behaviors. That's not to say that punishment doesn't have a place. Uh, but what we find with punishment is behavior is often suppressed. Okay, so it's not forgotten. It's there, but we don't do it because I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, it doesn't really teach you the right thing to do. It just teaches you to not do the wrong thing. It also will teach discrimination. Um, punishment can teach fear. Uh, if a, a parent, for example, or somebody is harsh with their punishment and it becomes you know, physical or harsh, um, you behave out of fear to that person. Physical punishment actually may increase aggression. Um, it's actually one of the risk factors for somebody to become uh, physically abusive to children is if they were physically abused as a child. And it can be teach that aggression, okay? Or perhaps there's a genetic link there too. Maybe there was that was the type of person that becomes punished when the parent is that frustrated. But generally speaking, we would like to use uh, reinforcement be because of the advantages of that. Okay, but it doesn't say that punishment is not a good thing. It definitely changes behavior. So with Skinner's legacy, he left a, a bit of a controversy uh, w with the conditioning. Because basically, he's removing the free will that human beings have. He's saying that we're all product of the responses we've had from our behavior. And this is, dictates who we are. And he acknowledges that there's a cognitive aspect to our our thinking and what we do, uh, but he tended to discount it. And that's the main focus of, of the criticisms of the operant conditioning. So where do we apply it? This is moving on to the next module. So application of operant conditioning. Um, we use it at school, we use it in sports, at home for self-improvement. Um, 
at school, this was a, a big dream of the behaviorists as they thought, you know, like with immediate gratification now that we have uh, access to online quizzes that will score things right away. So it gives you automatic feedback. So even in all education, you know, teachers, we try to give you feedback of what you're doing, whether it's it's a, a summative type of assessment like a test or just talking to you and letting you know that you're doing it the right way. In sports, we can use, you know, shaping, for example, if uh, you're teaching someone to golf and you're trying to teach them to putt, you can, they can first of all learn to make short putts and gradually move back. So you're shaping the behavior. And of course, you would, re the reinforcement is seeing that ball go in the hole. Um, at home with our children or anyone else, how we, we interact with one another. And of course, for self-improvement, you can use these concepts to improve yourself. You can... Um, you can actually come up with a plan to try and reinforce behaviors that you want to exhibit more, like maybe studying a bit more, you know, spending more time learning your psychology vocabulary. You can reinforce yourself by giving yourself a cookie or something, something that's reinforcing, but it would take a plan. And if you're interested in, you know, in trying to change a behavior of some kind, come and talk to me and we'll, we'll uh, try and look at a plan and see if we can make it work. There are steps we can follow. So what's the difference between classical and operant? Okay, so the basic idea, when you think of classical condition, it's basically stimulus substitution. Okay, so the basic idea is the organism, the person or animal or whatever the organism is, associates two events. Okay, in operant conditioning, it's, so it's the result of a behavior. There's, you do something and whatever happens right after will reinforce or punish you. So you associate behavior with the resulting events. The response in classical conditioning is un involuntary and automatic. So these are natural things we bring into the world. You can teach a dog to classically condition uh, with salivation, but you can't teach a dog to um, lay down with classical conditioning because there is nothing natural that's going to cause that to happen. I guess you could make them tired somehow. Um, but operant conditioning, these are voluntary things that you do. You go use a... a candy machine or a drink machine you put money in you push a button food or a drink comes out and you are reinforced that you're and you're likely to do it again acquisition is the associated events remember it's the neutral stimulus is paired with an unconditioned stimulus and the neutral stimulus then becomes a conditioned stimulus for a conditioned response in operant conditioning associating response with a consequence the reinforcer the punisher extinction Okay, the condition in classical conditioning, the condition response decreases when the condition stimulus is repeatedly presented alone. Okay, and that will happen. It will extinguish over time. Um, in operant conditioning, extinction is more the responding decreases when the reinforcement stops. Okay, you're told you're doing a good job or you're getting paid. You know, it's one of the things that happen. You know, people get paid for grades and then all of a sudden they stop getting paid for them. And I'll say, well, why do I do this? Okay, spontaneous recovery in classical conditioning. It's the period after, um, after extinguish, it's extinguished and then it just comes back out of the blue. In operant conditioning, it's a reappearance after a rest period of an extinguished response. Generalization is... In classical conditioning, we is the tendency to respond to other stimulus that you may find similar to the conditioned stimulus. In operant conditioning, the organism's response to similar stimuli is also reinforced. Discrimination um, in classical conditioning is the ability to distinguish between a conditioned stimulus and other stimulus that don't give you that unconditioned uh, response. Okay, so um, the dog salivates to a bell, but he doesn't salivate to a phone ringing, so that would be discrimination. And in operant conditioning, it's the organism learns that certain responses, but not others, will be reinforced. Okay, so that's probably enough for this. We're going to look at learning and personal control along with social learning in the next video. We'll see you folks in class. Goodbye for now.